Hey guys, welcome back. This is Bernard from the BTN HD, and today we're going to be dealing with how to install and configure an RD Gateway server. So this is my environment. Let's get into it, right? I have two virtual machines. One virtual machine is my BJ-Gateway, right? This is the one we're going to be installing the RD Gateway services. But this machine is also my Active Directory, my DNS, and my DHCP. Now, best practice, so do not follow me. Uh, you can follow the steps on how to get it up and running. Uh, if it was a production, most likely the gateway is going to be on its separate machine. My second uh, virtual machine is a Windows 10 machine, which is added within my domain controller. As you can see, this is the machine right here. Awesome. And uh, the environment that I'm running is a Windows Server 2008 R2 edition. You could do it with Windows Server 2012. It's up to you, but I did it on the Server 2008 R2. So the first thing that you guys need to do, uh, okay, one other thing that I have in my lab, I got two virtual machines plus the way that I'm going to be connecting is I'm going to be connecting using the host. Remember, I'm running everything on a VMware workstation. So my host is what I'm going to be using to remote into my, uh, to remote into this machine right here, my BJ Windows 10, which is part of the domain, okay? I could do it through RDP, which is easy, but we want to use the 443 port, a secure connection to connect to that. All right, so we are going to do is, let's get into our BJ gateway or your gateway server. Uh, I'm gonna minimize this. Oh, before I even minimize that, I also created an account. BJ Tech, uh, BTNHD is a user account, which is very limited. Uh, this account is just inside the domain users account, so it's not an admin. And this is the account that I'm logged into um, this machine. I'm logged into the Windows 10 as BTNHD over the Active Directory. All right, so let's get started. So let's open up our server manager. And once you have your server manager, you want to go into Add Roles. Once the Add Roles wizard pops up, you want to click on Next. You want to go into Remote Desktop Services. Click on that. Now, I want, to, I want you guys to keep in mind that Remote Desktop Services are, is already installed within Windows Server 2008. Uh, the only thing that you're doing is you're adding an additional feature to that. So I'm going to show you guys. So let's go to Start, uh, Administrative Tools, and you already have the Remote Desktop Services folder there. All we're doing is adding an additional thing. So let's go back into the wizard. Uh, we're going to click on Next. Uh, we're going to click on Next again. Uh, you got to make sure that you pick Remote Desktop Gateway because that's what we want. Make sure you pick everything, all the required uh, roles and services that we need. Just click Add. Click on Next. Uh, I'm going to choose the SSL encryption later because I'm going to do a self-sign. Most likely, you guys are going to import an SSL that you purchased somewhere else like GoDaddy or another services. But uh, for this video, I'm creating a self-sign certificate. So are we going to click on next? I'm going to leave the option as now because I want to edit and modify the policies right now. So let's click this, next. Uh, add the group that you want to have access to the RD gateway. Uh, for this lab, I'm going to do domain users. See if I spell it right, right? Domain users. There we go. Click, yep. But most likely in a production environment, you're going to create your own organizational group and just add individuals in there so they can have access to the RD gateway. Uh, so click on next. I'm going to leave everything as default. Uh, you can either allow users to connect only to computers in the following group. I'm not going to do that now. I'm going to do allow users to connect to any computer on the network. Now, best practices if you want to really keep everything tight within your network you will pick this option create a group within your active directory and just add the computers inside that group and whatever group that you have that you chose here in this option and those computers that are inside that group those are the computers that are only going to have access within your rd gateway so we're going to click on next here uh next again uh make sure that network policy server is uh, checked by default it should click on next Next again, everything is the default, so you don't have to select anything. Click on next, and we're going to click on install. All right, so installation is completed. Awesome. I haven't enabled the Windows um, updates, but make sure whatever machine that you're deploying your gateway uh, services into, make sure it's fully patched. So I'm going to click on close, and uh, I'm going to close this up because I don't need it now. I'm going to close this up because I don't need it now. Uh, one of the things that I did within my gateway server is uh, I... Uh, created a cert folder and I shared it out and so if I go to computers my C drive this folder right here this is where I'm going to be dropping my self-signed certificate okay and uh, let's close this up 
And before we even start with the gateway, we need to open up a port within our firewall. Remember, our gateway is going to be using 443, which is SSL, uh, you know, uh, port. And uh, remote desktop, I believe it uses 3348, which is a new, new. And we want to use 443. So we're going to click on start and we're going to click, we're going to type in firewall. We're going to click on that and we need to create a rule. And the rule is going to be inside inbound because everything that's coming from inbound, right? Inbound, right? Yeah, inbound rule. Uh, we want to accept it. So let's go new. It's going to be a port. Click on next. The specific port is going to be 443. So anything coming from the 443 uh, connection, we, we're going to accept it. Click on next. Uh, allow all the connections. This is really up to you. You can apply it to only your domain, private and public. I'm going to leave everything as default. Again, this is my lab, so I don't really care. So click on next. Uh, let's give it a name of n underscore 443 and hit finish. Okay. We're going to close that up. Now we're going to go to start administrative tools, remote desktop services. And as you can see, we got a new item, which is the remote desktop gateway manager. So click on that. So we're going to open it up and we need to create a uh, self-signed certificate. Most likely, if you guys already had your SSL certificate, you imported it during the wizard. If not, you got to do this. So on your primary node, just right click. You go to properties. So once the properties dialog box pops up, you want to click on the SSL certificate and you want to create an import certificate. Now, if you didn't import it during the wizard, you can import it here. If not, we can create one. I'm going to create a self-signed one and uh, I'm actually going to use for the certificate name. I'm going to use the IP address of my gateway. Now you have to use the DNS. That's what you need to use for this certificate. Use the DNS. Do not use the IP address. No, no, no. It's really bad. Because I'm doing everything in a self-contained environment and everything is secured, I'm going to use the IP address for now. So it's going to be 192.168.129.131, which is the IP address of this machine. And I'm going to show you guys. Let's go to command prompt. And I'm going to do IP config. So that's, that's it. Okay. And I'm going to drop this certificate into that folder that I showed you guys that I created. And it's shared out. There you go. And we're going to call it uh, BJ dash gateway. Awesome. And we click OK. And it's done. Okay, let's double check if it's there. Go to C drive certs and there it goes. How beautiful. We're going to click apply. And we're going to press OK. So now it's time to test our machine. We need to remote into this machine. Uh, a couple of things that you need to do inside your client machine is uh, what I did. I went into the systems. Let's click, click on the start menu and go to systems. Once the system dialog box pops up or the window, you're going to click on remote settings. So the user account control is going to pop up during this account. The reason why is because this uh, account does not have full admin rights to their machine. And that's a good thing. You don't want a user to have full access to their machine. They do a lot of damage. So we're going to log into an administrative account so we could uh, get into the remote settings. So within the uh, system properties, uh, within the remote tab, make sure that you allow remote connections to this computer is enabled. I also enable this option because it's extremely secure, especially if you want to keep everything nice and tight within your network. And I also clicked on select users and I added the user for this particular machine. So this user, this user account only has access to this machine when it remotes into as well as the administrator, right? So let's click OK. We're going to leave this as is. Let's get into uh, my share. So right now I'm in my host machine. So I'm going to minimize VMware workstation. And right now I'm already inside the path of my active directory. This is the path right here, right? So to expand this. I'm going to go to certs. And from here, I'm going to right click on the certificate that we created together, which is a self sign. And I'm going to do install certificate and I'm going to click open from here. I'm going to go to next. And I want to place this certificate in the following store. So we're going to hit browse and we want to put it in a trusted root certification authority. So we're going to click on OK. We're going to go to next and we're going to finish. You're going to get a nice little warning, a security warning. It's going to say you're about to install a certificate from a certificate authority CA claiming to represent 192, which is my IP address. Most likely it's going to be your DNS, which if I was doing it through a DNS, it would be bj-gateway.btnhd dot edu right but yeah i trust this hit yes and import it successfully awesome press ok so within my host remember i'm not using my virtual machine this machine that i'm using right now is not part of active directory so i'm going to click on start right click go to properties 
and I want to show you guys that this machine is in inside a work group, right? Close that up. So let's click on start again. Let's go to remote desktop connection, and we're going to go 192, 168, uh, 129, 132. This IP address is this virtual machine right here. I'm logging into this virtual machine as RDP, but we're using the gateway services that we installed. So let's get back into that. So let's get back into our remote desktop connection and we're going to show options and we're going to go to the advanced. Now within advanced, you're going to go into settings. We want to do use these RD gateway server settings. I'm going to use the IP address. Most likely you guys are entering your DNS name. Okay. So I'm going to use the IP of my uh, gateway server. Uh, 192, 168, 129, uh, 131. Make sure it's correct. Okay. Bypass RD gateway server for local addresses. Okay. 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 This looks good. We're going to click, uh, okay. And we're going to click, uh, connect. Okay. So you're going to get the prompt right here. It's saying, the, the credentials will be used to connect to blah. So let's, uh, use BTN HD, which is my domain name. And this is the user's name, BTN HD. And we're going to use the password. And we're going to click OK. You're going to get a nice little remote desktop uh, connection dialog box. The, the identity of the remote computer cannot be verified. Do you want to connect anyway? Yeah, I trust it. This is my machine. This is the machine that we're connecting to. Awesome. So we're going to click Yes. It's configuring the remote session. Most likely, this machine right here is going to be locked. It's going to automatically lock, and I'm able to remote into it. So everything that you see here, like the command prompt, the system, you're going to see it right now. So it looks like it's remoting in. Super excited. This is awesome. It's probably going to take some time because right now I'm hopping through uh, my host. My host is hopping into a virtual environment. That hop is going into the RD. That RD is going inside the Windows 10. And then I'm able to connect to that Windows 10 machine, which is awesome. That's what we want. It's, it's huge security, but I'm getting into it using port 443 rather than using the default RDP port, which is 3348. All right. As you can see, guys, I finally remote into um, the Windows 10 machine using the host. Remember, I have two VMware workstation machines that are running. One is the gateway server and the other one is a Windows 10 machine, which I'm actually remoting into. And I'm using the host to remote into. So that's awesome. So as you can see, this is the machine and it's automatically locked. And I'm going to minimize the VM workstation because I want to show you guys. And this is it. How awesome. Cool. So let's get inside the VM workstation and let's get inside the gateway server. And when we're within the gateway server, one of the cool things I like about this, let's click on the node. And if I expand this and I go into the monitoring, uh, section. I should see a user that's logged into my network. Ah, that's awesome. So this is the target computer, which is the computer that's logged into. This is the client IP. As you can see, this IP address is extremely different from the VMware NAT that we're using. And the target port is 3389, but is actually using 443. That's awesome. This is pretty cool. Uh, that's it, guys. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video on how to install and configure and test your RD gateway server. If you have any comments or concerns, leave them at the bottom at the comment section. Don't forget about hitting that like button. And I catch you guys on the next one. Peace out.